Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Vermont Scale Customs. And uh, as you can see, I have the C24 Green Machine on the bench here. Um, I wanted to take some time to kind of do, A, a little bit of a talk about, uh, kind of about this truck, because I've had a lot of questions about this one here lately, uh, about how it was built and everything that's going on with it. And then the other thing is, is that a couple of weeks ago, when I had this out running, uh, I blew one bead on here somewhere. Uh, I think it was the right rear. And so I wanted to do a video today of me gluing the beads on these, uh, as well as taking a little bit of time to kind of talk about these wheels and tires and just this whole setup in general. So let's just get right to it. There's no need for me to sit and ramble on any more than necessary. So I'm gonna pop this rear wheel first and we'll take a peek at uh, what's going on there. And I'll kind of show you some of the comparisons uh, between this setup and what they would look like stock uh, coming from Injora. I, of course, am using the uh, Fate E tires um, off of like an FY003, and they are bead locked onto uh, some Injora slash NN uh, tires, or excuse me, wheels. And then uh, I have them also to offset with a couple of nylon spacers to kind of give it a little bit more of a track width. And in order to perform that little trick, I do like to uh, utilize a little bit longer screw with a nut packed all the way down to the end. It kind of helps uh, just, you know, just provide a little bit more support there on the outer side for all the stress and stuff that these endure. So um, now that I have this off of the truck, let's take a second to weigh how much these clock in at. Now this is just the raw wheel and tire. There is a foam inside. So let's just kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at that's sitting on each corner. There are no, there is no weighting done to any of these at all. So let's see what we got. So these clock in at around 41 and a half, the way they sit. So you can figure that's about 166 grams, I think sitting all the way around uh, in comparison to say, with the way they are set up stock, which is about 35 grams. So there's about a six or a seven gram difference per wheel and tire. Now that might vary a little bit. Um, this is actually one of my original uh, FAEs on an original FAE rim, and this is, has been weighted uh, inside with, uh, say, like lead solder around. So I've got close to 60 grams per, per wheel, so that would be around 240 sitting on the bottom side all the way around. So that's a fair amount of weight. That's almost clocks in at about a half a pound when you kind of figure it all out. Um, and that's an extra that's an extra bunch of ballast, but it's also a lot of extra weight for a vehicle to move. So I think what I've decided on, at least with this particular one, and after I've been running it now the pretty much the whole summer this way, um, I'm not gonna weight these at all. With all the ballast that this thing needs is sitting down on the bottom side with, with plenty uh, to go on. So I think my whole idea would pretty much just be to uh, finally glue the bead because I've been just sort of waiting to see how they perform on this thing and whether or not it was gonna be something I really wanted to commit to doing. So after seeing how they've work just fine and I've been completely happy with the performance. Um, I decided to fully commit to just go ahead and lock those beads down. Uh, and I have no real intention to ever take these rims apart much and use them for any, any other truck. This truck is pretty much set the way it's set now. And so I'll run this the way, the way it is for the time that I have it and this, as long as it's gonna be a part of my collection. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and break this down, which is just six, Hex screws, set those guys off to the side. Some of these do strip as well. Um, I've been running these for a while and they're not 100% strip, <laughs> strip safe, I guess. The holes get a little worn out, but four or five out of six isn't bad. You can get that, get that many. You're in good shape. So I've just got this one. Doesn't want to play nice with the others. And it's starting to go now. Okay, there it goes. All right. Now that that's freed up, let's see if I can get that guy the rest of the way out of there. Okay. 
I did paint these as well. They were chrome a while ago. I'm not real concerned about the glue sticking or not sticking. I think that'll be just fine on there. Um, I did let that paint sit for about 48 hours before actually reassembling the tire. So I'm not real concerned about the paint lifting off if they were bonded well enough. So we're breaking this down, looking on the inside. You know, these are just plastic bead locks through and through. They are vented, but they will essentially get sealed up once all is said and done. Now, <laughs> what have I got here? This is, uh, I believe this is a cut foam. If I, if I either, either it's a cut foam or I did just such a good job on the original. Oh, no, you know what? I did not cut these foams. I take that back. Um, I think I decided to keep, because I bought two sets of these. And when I got the silver set, um, I decided to keep them fully intact. And so I discovered that they would have worked really well inside of this particular setup and have been absolutely exactly what this needs. It doesn't fill up the entire, the entire a, width, which still allows for nice corner sidewall compression, but it gives a great amount of uh, support like right in the middle of the tread for stuff. And like I said, it doesn't allow it to completely just collapse upon itself. It just gives it a great amount of structure. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is, is just to, to be sure that this thing seats properly and I don't have any issues, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse everything off. I'm gonna get dirt off of this and I'm gonna go ahead and dry it and then I will be right back. So let's do some camera magic and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Now the real, excuse me, tire has been all washed up, cleaned up. And as you can see, I've actually had this glued on another set of rims. This is probably one of my older sets of Fade tires. Still holding up after about two years of some pretty steady use. So my idea was that I would um, essentially glue the rear part of the rim on first, but obviously you'll need to reinsert the foam before doing that. And you can see that gives plenty of room for that to, to fit back down in there. It really doesn't fit uh, too tight against that, that, uh, that wheel at all. Um, and I also want to point out too, this is something that hopefully you can see this well enough on camera. Um, I think that these fate E tires are slightly larger than 1.55. Um, and the reason is, as you can see a little bit of play between the rim and where it hits the edge of the bead. However, there's still enough lip for that to sit onto. Um, but it is not exactly uh, as tight or as nice as that you would want it to fit on them. So that's kind of hence the reason the bead um, has now popped off about two or three times since I've been running it this way in the last six months. Uh, and also the reason why I'm finally deciding just to commit to gluing these down. Uh, I really like the way these run and I've had no problem with their, their performance. So I think at this point I'm ready to, to commit to having these on here permanently now. Um, I wanted to try a couple different types of super glue, but I think what I'll do first is see if I can use, uh, use up some of this gel that I have. I don't know if any of this is still going to be good. And that appears that's probably set right up inside the tube already. Nice. Let's see how this one's doing. See if we can get anything out of this. There it is. So I'm gonna put the, the glue on the rim itself and not the bead, right? And I'm going a little heavy, I realize that. I wanna make good contact. I wanna make sure that everything is gonna sit on there and sit well enough and that I don't have to do this again. You can probably use CA glue if you have it. I have some, it's just that it's a little more expensive and I would probably rather use up this dollar store super glue before I go and dip into my eight, nine, ten dollar per bottle CA glue that I would probably rather use for other projects. So I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Kind of help press it into place. But very, very gently, you obviously don't want to push it all the way through the tire. But the idea is to keep even amount of pressure while that sets up and it is plastic against rubber, so it shouldn't take too long, just a few seconds to kind of set. And you can tell that's already starting to, to bond. We'll just give that a few more seconds to dry. And 
And if you do want to clean up any excess glue in and around the rim, have yourself a toothpick nearby and see if you can't get in there and kind of either spread some of that glue around or just clean it up if that's something that might bother you. Doesn't really seem like that's got too much extra in there to be too concerned about and that'll more or less just disappear once, the, once that dries up. Okay. I think at this point we're probably just about ready to go ahead and set the other side that really has bonded fairly quickly that only takes about a minute or so to really make good contact and, and start setting up well enough if you want to wait a little bit longer you certainly can just give it a feel give it the feel test see how it see how it feels see how it feels okay now that we got that all set, you know what I forgot to do? <laughs> you saw it here first. Let's get this ring back on the inside, which is gonna pop right back in there with no problem, thankfully. Make sure we stuck still on the other side and we are still in good shape. That means that's set up just nice, just fine. That was almost a mistake. Okay. Now this has two posts on here that need to line up with the wheel. Just make sure that your orientation of that is, is proper before you land this. Now this next step, I kind of recommend doing something like using a set of tweezers so you can sort of hold on to the wheel while you apply the glue. And that way, when you go to set it back down, you can hold that in position and kind of keep an eye on where that needs to go and find that spot where it wants to sit you know, maybe even do a practice run with it or two. You see how I just dropped it and slipped right there? You don't want to do that when your glue's on. That's how you get glue everywhere. That's kind of what you're looking, looking to do right there. You want it to just sit right on that thing and then just pop right down in there. So like I said, do a couple practice runs before you go ahead and officially commit to gluing this down. And that way, that way you know that you just got it right. And the only part you're doing is just gluing the bead on the outside to make contact with here. You're not gluing the two halves together or anything like that. You just want to get glue on the surface, set it down, and just kind of let it set like we did on the backside, which is already drying and setting up even more now as we go along here. So that's I, this is the fix. If you want to if you want to run this setup, this is I think really going to be the way to go. So let me get this prepped with some glue. I'm generally not a bead gluer. I do like uh, my stuff to be able to be, you know, torn back down and maintenance and stuff like that. But this particular set, um, I have every bit of confidence that I'm not going to run anything else on this truck at any point through its life cycle. Um, so I think just making that commitment with this alone is is more than more than enough. So here we go. I've got that glue on there. I'm looking for those two holes and hopefully I can find them easily enough. Now that's set back on there. What I want to do is just kind of make sure that's evenly spaced all the way around and kind of give it a little bit of a pressure fit concerned about any glue being on the tire, now would be the time to deal with that if you need to. Again, having a toothpick handy is, is a great way to take care of that stuff. Just give that a few seconds more to set up. I believe it's feeling like we could probably lock that wheel right back down now. So let's go ahead and start setting those screws back in there again. If I could 
find my driver. Now, the key thing with these two is to not put one screw in and try and crank it down all the way around. You want to go ahead and put all of them in and kind of get them evenly pressured against the wheel itself. Once you know that everything is all set, then you can start applying force and kind of working your way back around. And I like to skip every other one sometimes just to make sure that it's got a good even amount of pressure. That's the one that is stripped, unfortunately. And that's, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to tighten these individually down by themselves, like right off the bat. That's how you will unfortunately ruin the threads of these. So if you get, get them all started and it, that what happens is like that, that very evenly starts to apply the pressure of the rim, like all the way around. And it helps pull the bead together a little bit better. And again, this is not gluing the two halves of the wheels together. This is simply just gluing the bead to the tire itself. And it doesn't take much, but maybe a quarter to a half a turn on every one of these, the rest of the way around. That's the one of the strip, unfortunately. And basically there you have it. We are now fully glued. I don't have to worry about that coming off of there any longer. Now, a big clue about doing what I do with the spacers on this truck, a lot of people have asked a bunch of different questions. This was sort of one of those that once I threw this at people, I'm sure they were probably scratching their heads as to what the heck am I talking about? Um, a long time ago, I kind of figured out with my NN99, since they have much narrower axles, I wanted to push the track width out a little bit more. And I looked endlessly for the right washers to be able to do this. I play drums, and so very thankfully, I, I switch all of my metal washers over to nylon washers. Um, and so I buy these kind of by the hundreds. And um, they're the exact size to fit right over the WPL hexes, okay? And um, what that allows you to do, I mean, as you can see, I'm pushing this out probably a, almost a full centimeter. Um, and a lot of people that would worry, uh, I'm sure, so maybe you would want to do just one if you're concerned about any sort of strength issues or anything like that. But I can assure you that this truck, as well as multiple others, have been getting run this way now for a very long time. And how I do it is to just be sure to use a long bolt, like I said, with either a nut or a washer um, packed in on the end. And if you want to be 100% sure about that never coming off, you can also throw a little bit of thread lock on there. Not something I generally like to do, especially on the rear wheels. I like to let the rear pretty much kind of run as, as tight as they need to. I do a check just to make sure everything is running uh, freely. And I just, yep, there we go. That's what we need. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process all the way around. I'm not gonna do that on camera just to bore you to death. Uh, but at least in the meantime, I do kind of wanna take a little bit more time to kind of talk about this truck in general, um, a little bit about it. And so let me finish these wheels. And once that's all set, then I can kind of take a little bit of uh, time to sort of go over, kind of we'll do a walk around. How's that sound? All right, back in a bit. All right, I'm not sure if I had this camera in focus when uh, I showed you the last wheel that I was working on, but as a just in case, um, I kind of wanted to point out how much of the bead is actually grabbed by the tire itself. Um, this one has not been glued and I can, I can yank on that pretty good without pulling that out. Um, so basically that means kind of about half of what you see sort of in this area right through here is kind of captured by the lip of the, uh, the outer part of the wheel. And you can see on the backside, it hasn't, hasn't broken free at all. Um, that's still in really good shape. But you know, the big, the big catch on these is that the rims aren't exactly quite the same size as what the, uh, the bead of the Fate E tires 
is. It's, it's a little bit larger than a 1.5. I have tried to use 1.55 bead locks on these before, um, and it actually grabbed them just about the same way. The one thing I didn't try yet was try using a stamped steel bead lock to see if it would uh, grab it any, any further, you know, with a little bit more material pushed out that far. Um, but basically, uh, this was the other side. So I had, uh, unfortunately, popped out two beads. Um, but again, you know, the tires are still able to run okay. Uh, you know, there is foam inside. Uh, it doesn't look that good, especially on film, especially when you're trying to do videos. But um, that's why I'm gluing these. And, you know, I'm pretty convinced that this is, this is really the set of wheels and tires I'm probably going to run on this thing for, for as long as it's uh, running. And so uh, I decided to fully commit to just going ahead and, and gluing them. And uh, so I've got three of the four done so far and it's been going really well. Um, you know, gluing bead locks is actually really easy. You're not stretching tires over um, any surface that's already been glued. So that's kind of a nice thing where you don't have to drag glue over the tire and stuff like that. You know, you just, I've been applying it to the backside of the, the two halves and then setting it down onto the, the rubber itself and then letting it cure. And it's been holding on really well. And it holds its position too. It seems like it's uh, been the perfect fix for the problem that I've had. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one apart and get it all cleaned up. And uh, I will be back in a second once this one's all back together. Oh, I also discovered too that uh, I must have soaked up some water at some point in time running these in water because uh, my foams were a little wet. So um, it is kind of a, a little bit of an issue by gluing your beads, you kind of run that problem of not being able to really open those up again. Um, so it's, you know, six and one half dozen of another. And since these are vented, I think in one or two spots, you know, they're vented in one spot, that means water probably can get in there again and probably will. So, um, but just something to be forewarned about. Uh, it's kind of the high cost of running RCs with vented tires, I guess, you know, you're going to have water that's going to infiltrate the foams and it can cause them to break down a little bit quicker. Uh, but I've been running these for, I don't know, let's call it since basically like the winter and I haven't had any problems at all. I haven't noticed any issues. So it would probably take a few years for that problem to really kind of to surface. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and turn the cameras off. I'm going to get this all cleaned up, get it all glued back together and then I will pop back on. Uh, to throw the wheel on and then I'll take a minute to just talk about the truck and its build qualities and stuff like that so you guys know a little bit more about this one in particular. So be back in a second. Okay, all the wheels and tires are back on. The beads have been glued. This thing should be set for a little while now. Uh, so while I have the cameras on, uh, maybe now would be a good time to talk about really kind of what this thing is all about. Uh, I've had some actually really very serious questions about how I did some of the more detailed work uh, underneath this thing to kind of get it to run the way that it does. Um, I guess really the easiest best way to start would be to flip over and show you exactly what's going on underneath. Um, shortly after I ordered my original C14, um, I had placed an order for a C24. Um, I think both of those had arrived and I was busy trying to uh, make good with like a red set of links, a 370 motor and WPL factory axles um, in a metal upgrade kit and so on and so forth. Um, and I think after a period of time I decided, I saw this chassis online with carbon fiber, carbon fiber frame rails and decided that it would be a worthwhile um, something to try, I guess, basically. So um, it kind of all starts there. And that comes with the heavy duty axles. Um, these links, I do believe it has a 370 motor that comes with it as well. I probably burned that one up long ago. And then of course, carbon fiber frame rails. Um, these shocks and um, pretty much all the steering linkage and everything that you see up front. And also it does come with a really long servo horn. Um, kind of one of the big key things about this particular chassis is being able to mount the servo on the top side of the tray and not on the bottom side. If you end up mounting it on the bottom, um, that really limits your uh, maximum 
compression that you can get out of your front angle or your front axle because the uh, the truss and the links and everything end up hitting the servo there. So it was absolutely huge to um, basically take those mounts that come stock that are on the bottom and you flip them around to the top side and that lets you mount everything on the top, which just opens up so much more travel. Uh, and that also too allowed me to be able to finally angle mount the front shocks because uh, this chassis has existed um, kind of on a couple of other trucks or at least one main truck that was my white one that had a roll cage on it and stuff like that and had a roll bar some stuff that I pulled off an RGT truck um, and so I hadn't at that time uh, moved the servo to the top side of the tray hadn't rear ang uh, angled mounted the front shocks and it was just the, the rear and I think I was also running different shocks on that at, at the same time because uh, I didn't really quite think that these were what I wanted to be using so, um, while I'm on the subject of the shocks, these shocks, um, I think they're a pretty common one that you can find. I think they're RBRC, if you really want to know the truth. Um, but what I did with these when I got them was I discovered that they had the same diameter shaft that my RGT 13161 truck had. So, since that 13161 wasn't really anything to speak of and wasn't my, you know, main crawler or anything like that, the piston shafts of those um, were about three millimeters longer than what these were and you know in the in this world three millimeters can make a ton of difference so why not try and, and add that so that's what I did I swapped the main the, the pistons over from those shocks into this and got them all built back up I do run just a small amount of oil in here it's like one drop um, and that's really just to keep everything moving nice and smooth I will say though that I've noticed within the last couple of weeks that I think these O-rings in here are finally kind of starting to break down after about a year and a half of use. Um, I do believe that basically after a while some of that silicon rubber uh, kind of soaks up some oil and it may expand over time, um, you know, just because rubber is kind of a porous material. Uh, and so it soaks up that oil and it might kind of expand and when that expansion happens it probably constricts around the piston a little bit more. So I've noticed that when this thing sits for a little while sometimes the o-rings will stiffen up and I really just need to kind of loosen up the suspension a little bit before uh, it kind of starts moving around nice and freely again. So that could mean at some point in time I either need to totally take the O-rings out and replace them or just completely finally do away with the O-rings entirely and just go oil free which is kind of generally what I like to do. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, I'm just going to stay focused on trying to talk as much as I can about this truck. So um, this runs a 370 uh, motor but it is also substantially different than the normal um, WPL or even aftermarket 370s. This one came out of an RGT 1361, same place I got the, the shock pistons from. Uh, this is a much higher KV motor that also spins, I don't even know how much faster. It definitely has considerably more RPM output than what the standard 370 does. So that in conjunction with the um, gear reduction and then hitched up to the single speed gearbox um, gives this thing incredibly low speed control that you've seen plenty of time in the videos up to a maximum I'd say probably around a six to maybe seven mile per hour top speed which is pretty good for a truck like this it moves along really well um, it's not jumping speed this isn't a jumping truck it's a crawler but sometimes every once in a while I do like to do a couple donuts in this thing and it will do them um, what else could I say 60 amp ESC and this is also running a fly sky radio system in it. It's still running a 1500 milliamp 7.4 volt uh, 2S LiPo. I generally don't ever run 3S um, just because I, I, I like to go slow so I try and build everything with my ESCs to kind of be a little bit larger capacity that way uh, there's just power on demand for all the different stuff especially when you're running you know servos and these, these trucks are which are you know can be pretty heavy downhill weighted and stuff like that sometimes. Um, so I kind of think that sort of covers most of the ground. I mean, obviously, you know, the bumper and stuff like that uh, comes on this chassis kit. Uh, what else? The rock sliders came from a, uh, a purchase that I had made uh, last year. Uh, I bought a big used lot of uh, 
WPL stuff off of eBay. I guys were originally found it on Facebook Marketplace, but the guy sent me over to his eBay sale, so took care of it all through there. When that showed up, there was a bunch of goodies in there, which uh, actually gave me another bed, uh, the rock sliders, another set of uh, Fate E wheels and tires, etc. But anyway, all a side story. Um, this truck has been built up now for, I think, a little more than a year. or coming up on a year. I, I don't even remember now. Uh, but it has run just absolutely flawlessly well. Uh, I will take a second to kind of talk about the axles underneath. Um, I know some folks that have had these that really don't necessarily like how they run. Uh, they, they do come loose. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, but the, the play and everything that you see right here is essentially just from, these are just the way these links are made. Uh, I don't think you'd ever find um, any higher tolerance at this scale than what you see in this right now. Um, and I'm not even sure how you'd ever tighten that up. But again, about the axles, um, every, every so often I do need to go through and open these up. It's like eight screws, it's a major pain. But I need to go through and uh, make sure that all the grub screws are tightened down. That's the, the two on the outside that hold the, uh, the hexes on. And then, of course, the one that holds the ring gear on the axle. And I can kind of see after about, about four months of running this or so pretty heavily, I do have just the tiniest little bit of, I think, slop in one side or the other. I think it's this side, and I do think the ring gear might be in need of... Uh, getting undone and, and be tightened up again. Not not something that I'm unhappy to have to do other than the fact that it really is kind of a time consumer. Um, but being willing to do that kind of maintenance to these axles, uh, which is something I've done quite a bit over the last couple of years, has only been incredibly beneficial and has kept this truck running as smoothly and as well as what it does. It's It probably runs as close to machine-like as any of my 116s. And it's just because it just seems to have a good mechanical tolerance about it. Um, and so, uh, what else could I sort of ramble on and talk about this? This is using the Jurassic Park uh, toy figure that I think I got from uh, like a Big Lots or something like that. I found that a couple years ago and sort of held on to it and waited till just the right size, right scale to put that in. So, uh, I can't remember the character's name, but that's who that is. That's actually from Jurassic Park. Uh, this got custom lights front and rear. I did uh, lights in the bumper and then lights up front and I dipped those actually. Those are blue but they were dipped in yellow. And then of course I went through the big pain of getting tail lights rigged up in this thing too because as far as I'm concerned no vehicle is complete until the tail lights are in. Um, let's see what else could I possibly ramble on about. Um, <laughs> The, the toolbox on this thing is so now painfully loose. It barely stays in. Um, I'll probably at some point either have to get a new bed or just try and find a way to strap this whole thing down. But it's held up well enough. It seems to be doing okay still. And as long as they don't roll the truck, the, everything stays intact. Uh, people ask what color green this is. This is Tamiya NATO Green. I can't recall if it's TS57 or TS61. It's whichever the matte color of those two are. Can't remember. It's been a year and a half since I painted this thing, so that that's a detail that I, I tossed the can a long time ago. Um, it's been running really well. You guys have seen all the videos. I, I think this thing even might have a little bit of a following around the world, which is really kind of awesome. And you get so many compliments on this truck and this build. And it to me, you know, that that's one of those things that really just kind of makes the channel... Um, it's, it's what drives my creativity. You guys are happy. It makes me happy. And so that's what we, uh, what we keep doing here. It's just trying to keep, keep people happy. So, um, and try to keep my trucks running too. Jeez. Um, what else? You know, it doesn't have this crazy, you know, three, four inches of articulation. It's got a good proportional amount of it. I've also, uh, taken a bunch of material out of the wheel wells that you can see. Um, up front, I did as much as I felt comfortable with. Uh, I did not want to start cutting into the bumper and start removing any of that. It does not affect in any way how this thing runs. It hasn't really ever had any problems with uh, making too much contact, and that's only at the most extreme steering angles. 
Um, in regards to wheel rub on the shocks, that's also one of the reasons why I have my uh, nylon washer offsets in here. And that's because at full, at full lock, I do get some contact. Uh, but it again does not affect how this thing runs. It does not, you know, the motor is strong enough that those those little things are just nominal. Uh, the motor doesn't sweat that at all. If it had any lesser power motor in it, it probably would have a problem with that. But a 60 amp on that RGT 370 motor in there, it doesn't even sweat the small stuff. Um, which is words of life. Don't don't ever sweat the small stuff. Anyway, uh, what else we got? These shackles, uh, kind of one of my favorite things about this. Uh, I Actually, it's like one of the things I really look for and listen for whenever I, I do video on this. I don't remember. These probably just came from Amazon. I think I bought them back when uh, I got my first got my Red Cat. And uh, I kind of like the fact that they, they clanked around a little bit. So that's the way that's going to stay. Uh, what else? Yes, this is a fully functional spare, which is the exact same setup as what the, the, the reels are. Um, so if I really do ever blow one out in the trail, I do have one that's that really is set up and ready to go. Fully matched all the way through, including the foam setup and all that. So note to self, if you really do want to make sure you can stay running out there, right down to the bolt too, just in case for whatever reason, if this bolt were to disappear and lose it, couldn't find it, but the wheel were still on, whatever the case may be, I can still in some way keep going. So um, I think that sort of about covers all of the ground. Um, Got a lot of editing to do. I got three cameras going right now. So hopefully this video was at least somewhat informational for you. Let's kind of regroup uh, or recap. I, I, I weighed the tires, you know, between the two, showing you how the differences in weight between these guys and the Faiis that I run. Um, then I showed you what exactly I was going to do for the mod when I dropped the bead there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the big recap and stuff like that, that kind of it kind of sort of sums it all up. So if you have any questions about this truck, please do not hesitate to ask. I always enjoy reading your comments and responding to them. I realize that I write small novellos um, in response to some of your questions, but there's a lot of information that, that spools around in my head, and I figure if there's any way that you guys are ever going to get the answers, I try and take the time to put as much that stuff down into the, into the answers for you. So um, grab a cup of coffee and sit down and read my replies sometimes. And uh, again, can't thank you enough for being here. All of the new subscribers, I mean, my gosh, I went from like 800 about two weeks ago to 855. So it just seems like the channel has really undergone a great new growth spurt. So thanks to everyone for being here. Um, if you have any requests for content or anything like that, again, please feel free to, to leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, do all that fancy YouTube stuff. You know how to do it. You're here at YouTube. So um, thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy out there.